he's dead. But the state of Israel has not risen to become the ruling state in the world. And he has not ruled the world from Jerusalem. Huh? A number of reasons. So he could not have been the Messiah. Tomorrow night or Thursday night, I'll give you some more reasons. And so they're waiting for the Messiah to come. What they did not know, and you and I know, is that this was indeed Al-Masih. And when they thought that he was dead, that they had crucified him, no, he was not crucified. Allah made it appear unto them that he was crucified and Allah raised him unto himself. So he did not experience something called mouth, mouth. And since every soul must taste mouth, who said so? Every soul must taste mouth, who said so? Yes, the Quran. Allah says so. Kullu nafsin Za'ikatul maut. Every soul must taste maut. Therefore, he also must taste now. Therefore, he will return. He will die. Since they are still waiting for Al-Masih to come, you can't live in New York and not know that. Still, they are still waiting for Al-Masih to come. And they had boasted of how they killed this one. The Prophet Muhammad informed us that Allah will send in the last stage this being created by Allah who will impersonate Al-Masih and who will convince them that he is delivering the return of the golden age. He will deceive them, however, because he would not be the true Messiah. He will deceive them because this would not be the return of the golden age. It would appear like that. And so Dajjal has been endowed with awesome powers of deception. He has a PhD in deception. Dajjal. This is indeed the meaning of the word itself. Dajjal. If Dajjal is to deceive Banu Israel and get them to be convinced that he is the Messiah, look at what he will have to do. Number one, he will have to liberate the Holy Land of non-Jewish rule. Number two, he'll have to bring Banu Israel back to the Holy Land. No matter how long they had lived outside of the Holy Land, he'll have to bring them back. Number three, he will have to restore the state of Israel. And number four, number four, he will have to take the state of Israel to that status where it will become the ruling state in the world. And he himself will then have to rule the world from Jerusalem. That's not an easy task at all for the Jal to perform. Hmm? When you give, make sure you put your hands deep in the pockets and give something, inshallah, for the masjid.
Now let's come to the first hadith. The very few I'm going to quote, but the very important. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, and it is perhaps the most important of the hadith I'm going to quote tonight. This one. He said, when Dajjal is released, he will live on earth for 40 days. One day, like a year. One day, like a month. One day, like a week. And the rest of his days, like your days. When his day is like our day, he will be in our dimension of time. But prior to that, he would not be in our dimension of time because his day would not be like our day. When he is in our dimension of time, at that time, it will be possible for us to see him. At that time, he will appear as a human being. A human being, not a system, not a civilization, a human being. And he would be a Jew. And he would be a young man powerfully built, with curly hair. At that time, when he appears in the world, in our dimension of time, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he will come from the east. He pointed his finger 20 times to the east. The Dajjal will come from the east. But what about prior to that, when he will not be in our dimension of time. Where will he be, for example, when, when his day is like a year? Where will he be? Do we have any answer to that? He's going to be on earth, but we won't be able to see him. The angels, are they here in this room? Yes? How many? Each one of you have two angels on your forehead, on your shoulders. So there are many angels right here in this room. They are on earth. Are they in our dimension of time? No. No, no, no. So they don't perform salat according to our timetable. Huh? Fajr? For them is not fajr for us. Hmm? If we were to go into that day in which they live, and we have to perform salat, can we perform salat according to this timetable? No, we're going to have to calculate to do it. Hmm? Can an angel come into our world? Can an angel come into our dimension of time so we can see the angel? Huh? Huh? Yes. Which one? Yes. Jibra'il alayhi salam. Came as a human being. Right in the masjid. Are there jinn in this masjid now? Oh yes, they are. They are not. Can we see them? Are they in our dimension of time? No, they are not. But can they enter into our dimension of time? Yes. Mr. Shaitan himself, Iblis. He came as a human being, as an old man, you remember, with a walking stick. So the Jal will enter into our dimension of time one day. We see him. But prior to that, in a day which is like a year, where will he be? It is from that location that he will commence his attack. 
he will begin his effort. Number one, to liberate the Holy Land. Number two, to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land. Number three, to restore the state of Israel. Number four, you know it's number four. From that location, he will begin the, the, the effort. Where will it be? Fortunately for us, we have the answer. And it is also in Sahih Muslim. It is known as the Hadith of Tamim Dari. Listen to it carefully now. Tamim Dari was a Christian who took the Shahada, became a Muslim in Medina. He came to the Prophet والسلام, and narrated an experience which he had. The Prophet والسلام, after the Salat in the Masjid asked the people, sit down, sit down. I have something to tell you. Tamim Dari has come to me and told me something about Dajjal which confirms what I have been saying to you. So we know that what is contained in this story is true. What did Tamim Dari experience? He said that he and some 40 of his companions went on board a ship. So you need water, eh? So they have to go in some place where you can travel with a ship, a sea or an ocean. And when they went on board the ship, a storm came. And the storm blew the ship for 40 days before, no, no, for a whole month, sorry, not 40 days. The storm blew the ship for a whole month before they reached land. Now, if you are on the western side of Arabia, which is Hijaz, and you get on board a ship, there are only two, two seas on which you can travel. One is the Mediterranean Sea and the other is the Red Sea. Only these two. But it seems very much unlikely, <laughs> in fact impossible, for a ship to be in the Red Sea and for a storm to be blowing and that that ship did not touch land for a whole month. Because the Red Sea is very narrow. And so I have chosen...